Welcome to the Fruit Punch Podcast. What is your zombie apocalypse plan? Oh, I have a really good answer. Uh, look at how he grabbed the mic. Yeah, I yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. such a good answer. Hold on a second. So, so, this is unrealistic. Let's keep that in mind. Like, just the most unrealistic thing I can think of. Like, no, there are no boundaries. There's nothing stopping me. Um, I first would procure myself one of those, like, shipping trucks. Like, Walmart shipping trucks. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, mm-hmm. one of those big ones on the highway. Like, Clearly you, know, you thought this out. You know what? <laughs> oh, Several yeah. times. Um, so, I would take that first. See, because this is a several-part plan, is the point. The several-part plan includes me having, like, a way to travel distantly with everything I need to be able to travel. Okay, so I would hit the Walmart first. That's dead ass what I do. I'd hit the Walmart first. With the Walmart truck. I would also hit the Lowe's. Oh, yes. And I would be getting a lot of like seeds and supplies. I'm getting mm-hmm. supplies. Why seeds? I will tell you because um, I think that the first thing that most people will do, if, if, if the first thing that they do is not cower and hide in their basement, I believe that the first thing that people do is they go to the store and they grab a bunch of like bullshit. They grab candy, they grab whatever, they just like chaos. Sometimes that's how it works. Like human beings. Really, when you give them, like, no limits whatsoever and, like, everything's going to shit, I believe that they will run into that store and they will take everything that's, that's yep. like, canned goods and all kinds of, like, they'll just panic and they won't know what to pick. So they pick the uh, two-year instead I of the ten-year the store. And then after they pick, after they pick all of these, like, like shelf-stable goods, they will leave behind the produce. Nobody wants to get cabbage when they're at the store, like, packing for the zombie apocalypse. Um, however, I would be buying the seeds. Kimchi. I would not be buying the seeds. I would be just stealing them, but <laughs> purge style. Looting like everybody I, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna join in, yeah. And <laughs> I'm gonna just I'm gonna collect like a butt ton of seeds because I know that part of my plan long term is to have a place to be long term and like to survive long term. So I'm Where would you go? I'm gonna learn how to plant. I'm going to start in the mountains. So I'm going to take my big old truck, right? I'm going to build like a little home in it. I'm going to put all my supplies in it. I'm going to do all that. And so you're going to um, build all this after the apocalypse starts? That doesn't make any sense. You're supposed to prepare. If you're secluded in the if mountains, I'm, there's a whole I'm, lot less likelihood of a zombie coming and finding you. No, because... no. Listen, if I'm prepping beforehand, that's just a crazy person. to me. Like, I understand. <laughs> no, I understand. But if you're prepping beforehand for something that you have no idea what it looks like, that doesn't make any sense. You don't know. You don't know what could happen. So I want a mobile unit. Why? Because it's adaptable. It's big. It'll push all the cars out of the way if I build like a little thing on it. Also, it wouldn't make sense. Like, oh, right. Yeah, you just need a spike snowplow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, I'm going to, I'm hoping that I will build like onto it. Like we could figure out how to weld. Mad like, Max that thing. We would, yeah, we'd get all the supplies we need, throw it in the back of the truck. We could make as many trips as we need to. Like an armored school bus. <laughs> I don't know where we would go, but we would have to go someplace that was very like big and wide open open but also that had um, why wide open and not the mountains well i would go to the mountains afterwards i it's a three-part plan is what i'm saying there's three parts to this plan okay part one is the truck and you would have like a little place where you could set up shop that's where you're like building modifications you're building your little home you're getting your little team together you know like you're doing all that oh stuff. yeah right now you're living on shelf stable goods to get medicine like people have to scout like it's a it's a little bit of a like a night terrors every night <laughs> It, it, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a, uh, uh, what is, like, struggle now, mm. thrive later. It's a very wartime right? type. It's very so wartime. I, <laughs> so we would build, though, like, a little thing on the front of, like, the bus or the truck or whatever we right. like, to, like, schloff cars off the highway. Just that way, bye-bye. That way we never get, like, stopped in the dead of the fucking highway with no way mm-hmm. to, like, get anywhere. Because the zombies will come up on us quick, quick. And they will find a way in there. You know, that's how it always goes. Mm-hmm. That's what I've seen. So you just get through everything and you just like build up your stores and your stocks. And once you have like a stable ground that you're like good with, then we would move up to the mountains and we'd mm-hmm. start slowly transferring supplies. And there we would like have like a place where we could stay that was secluded. 
and high up because it's difficult for them to climb, like especially over a period of time, they're more likely to go for things that are like level. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if you go move to the top of a mountain, slowly, it would take a lot of time. You can't take that truck up there. You and also, I mean? like, you'd have to, you'd have several, to know the risk trips. of like someone else finding your things and like just going to that. Right, but that's, that's the thing is because the first part of the plan exists, the second part of the plan is a little bit safer. The first part of the plan is getting ready to make sure that you have stable supplies. If you lose something, it's not going to be that big of a deal. If somebody gets hurt, it's not going to be crazy. Like making sure that you're stable right here where you are. And then once you're like, okay, everything seems pretty okay. We're going to start transferring things up the mountain. It's just hard for them to get to. We're going to have to be outside a lot because we're going to be gardening. And now a word from our robot generated content. Hey there, toothbrush and rock stars. Are you tired of the same old boring toothbrush routine every day? Well, get ready to add some music to your morning with our musical toothbrush, the Harmony Brush. That's right, this Harmony Brush will have you jamming out while you get your pearly white sparkling. No more boring humming or counting to 60. Now you can play a sweet tune with each brush stroke, whether you're a bluesy pruner or a rock star shredder. Our toothbrush will turn your bathroom into a concert hall. You'll be keeping your teeth and gums healthy while you jam. Brush your way to start with our musical toothbrush and get ready to add some harmony to your morning routine. Who needs a backup band when you've got a harmony brush? Welcome back to the podcast. In, in the essence of a zombie apocalypse, you're like, these things are going to kill us, uh, but we're going to put ourselves in direct sunlight, gardening. Tell me, <laughs> tell, me, tell me how you're going to survive past the six month mark without food. Mmm, I live off my <laughs> Peltier luck. Uh -huh. I'm a that's trust fund. That's an important buffer that we are going to need, for sure. Trust that's why fund you're Peltier with... luck. You don't get a choice. Well, see, that's the luck in action. Right. That's how I don't have to worry about food in six months, because you're already <laughs> teaching me to grow you it. You will be gardening. <laughs> I will be gardening. <laughs> that's the point. Like, we, I don't know if you'd be a good gardener. Uh, I'm a great gardener. Are I you? am especially good with hydroponics. I learned that at Jefferson Center. Are you good at hydroponics, or do you just have a lot of knowledge about hydroponics? I was good at it for the four weeks they let me take care of those plants. Oh. Yeah. That's nice. I grew lavender, and I grew hot peppers, and I grew sage and rosemary, and then I grew uh, cascading daffodils and all sorts of other nice little flowers. That's neat. You and didn't tell me anything about this. Yeah, I had a whole wall the size of this. Full of just hydroponic units. How did they build it? Did, was it already built? I mean, yeah, they're just like pre-made hydroponic units anyway. They're like tanks, you know, like yeah. this. And then... And so they just let you work in it? Yeah. But you were good at it. I was good at it. You should grow things then. Uh, yeah, I have a green thumb because I'm a nan. Oh. <laughs> Shout out Nan Nan. <laughs> Shout out Nan Nan. <laughs> That's literally the way you just... Let me plug my Nana's uh, Shout Instagram out Graham Graham. Graham. Graham Graham's Graham. <laughs> Go on to Instagram's Graham Graham's Graham. <laughs> You should have a character that's like a Graham Graham, um, that ha and like make yourself an Instagram. Oh yes, yeah. That's the second part. The second part is the mountains. We like learn to like forage. We learn to hunt. We learn to plant things so that we have kind of stable um, food source. Mm -hmm. And then um, once that's kind of I don't know uh, established. Once that's established, then we can kind of go wherever we want, and then we would choose, like, the place to permanently settle down. Because we'd have food source. But the other thing is, I wouldn't just be taking, like, oh, my family or whatever. If we find people, like, we'll just have to keep adding on. You really do. You have to kind of be a little picky. And but hope you have that to you're keep... not at risk of getting, like, But it's like a company. It's only oh, going he's... to grow if you keep adding new employees, because mm -hmm. you have to have people who have expertise in different things. Right. Well, you and... said you have to be picky, but what do you do with the ones you don't want? With you, the ones you don't want, um, you kill them. No, <laughs> he is you send them a letter saying thank you for applying. Yeah, it's more of a, it's more of a uh, don't know where you're gonna go, but you can't stay here kind of a situation. Mm -hmm. Like, and it, but yeah, heck yeah. If you come onto my, if you step on my squash and you're not allowed to be on the property, absolutely, I'll kill you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm gonna squash that head. I'll invite you to dinner, and I will make squash soup, and I'll be like these are the squash you stepped on and you'll be like oh well it tastes fine thank you very much and i'll be like it should because it's poisoned um so <laughs> enjoy your last meal like enjoy the squash damn I mean, you know yeah. hey, damn. you have to do your own judge jury and execution <laughs> during the apocalypse because there is no government to do it for There's you no so you can make some very rash bad decisions it's is it a bad decision 
Is it a bad decision, or are you protecting your loved ones and your legacy? From the squash stepper? Yeah. Don't step on my squash. Okay. <laughs> You're going to make a t-shirt that says, don't, don't step, step on, on my, my squash. squash. Don't, step don't on my squash. Don't tread on my squash. Do you know squash. why? Because even if, even if, okay, even if it was like an accident, do you have any idea what that means? Squash is a winter food. Do you know why? Because it's the only thing that'll grow in the freaking winter. It's winter hardy. What would you do if I had stepped on the squash by accident? I what I just told you. You would kill me? Yeah. I poisoned you with squash soup. Don't step on my squash. I'm serious. Okay. I'm so serious. If you ever want hey, if you ever need a gardening co partner, then there can no, be no murdering for mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you are allowed mistakes. Other people will not be allowed mistakes. Other people get murdered. <laughs> well, I'm going to be um, squash souping first and asking uh-huh. questions later. <laughs> squash soup, ask later. I guess this kind of leads me to a second question that I didn't plan to ask. But okay. <laughs> but you're very purgy. Oh, I just yeah, wonder, well, how would you handle the purge? Oh, that's yeah. fun. Hold on now. Okay, so the purge is interesting, right? Because you think everyone would be killing each other, but actually what would be happening is tax everyone... Evasion. Tax, tax evasion. evasion. Tax, tax evasion. evasion. Tax evasion. Tons and tons and tons of tax evasion. <laughs> Why? Right? Um, because it's the only because... time for 24 hours that you can put money in shell accounts. You can... Uh, dude, you can buy a bunch of gold and, over and, like, and ask yourself this, okay? Who in the purge is allowed to be completely like who would the, the rich? The rich. The rich. The rich. Make yourself rich so that the next purge you do not die. Yep, you will be able to make yourself insider rich. trading for 24 hours. Do you know how good that would be? Yeah. Also, I would go to Barnes and Noble, I would steal. Uh-huh. I would go to Walmart, I would steal. And Absolutely. I would do it right in front of everybody. I, right now... If I and truthfully, kind of thing, do you know what 95% of the people on the purge would do? Drugs. That uh, they weren't allowed to I do on the so. other days. I think people would steal. I, I truly think it would be drugs. I think people would steal. I'm with high C. I, I think people Looting. are going to do drugs anyway. That's I would loot. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to Joke Corner with Lucas. The kid who used to bully me at school still takes my lunch money. He makes great Subway sandwiches. And we're back. Listen, 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 listen. Can I do my cat voice for the for the yes, episode? Because it's already early today. In case you don't know who Cat Allenton is, she's a character played by Ariana Grande in the show Victorious. It's an it's an old Nick show, um, circa Dan Schneider's Bakery. I can use it for the whole. I, I can use it for the whole thing. It's really annoying, but it's funny. I feel like I'm one of, like, the only people who can actually do the cat voice. (laughs) But I don't really know how I learned it. I just sort of started doing the pretty thing that she does. It doesn't sound good. Nobody likes it. Every time I do it, everyone is very annoyed instantly. They'll laugh right away. They'll giggle. But then when they're done giggling, they look at me like, stop doing that. That's all. This is the voice. (laughs) You've done it. It's not particularly special, but I really, I like to use it because (laughs) (laughs) it's not particularly special, but I really like to use it because I'm a big Ariana (laughs) stan. That's the only voice I can do. That's not true. I can do the Russian accent. Yes, there is also the Russian accent. I can do the Russian as well. I'm very good at the Russian. Or so I've been told several times I'm very good at the Russian. Um, I have name for the Russian that I use. I have name for the person that this mm-hmm. Russian accent would be used. We both have the character. He, yeah, yes. his name is Mishka. I know what he looks like. He is short, white, bald man, very white, almost albino white. Bald, he shaves his hair off. He does not have a condition. He just doesn't like hair on his body. <laughs> and he does cocaine. And he lives in the USSR in the 1980s and he spends most of his hobby time in underground leather clubs just <laughs> just doing a little jig <laughs> in the way a little boy does little jigs that's one of my favorite what did we agree my character's name was i forget it was something boris boris you said it, it, 
Yeah, Boris. Yeah. And they, I, we decided that they were partners. Yeah. And, and Boris is comically tall, where Mishka is comically short and stout. Very intimidating looking, but very soft heart. Yeah, like very no. tall and square. Okay, if you've ever seen um, the Wish Dragon, there's there's two little henchmen characters. One is like a short, round, fat dude with no hair, and the other one is like a tall, like square looking dude, and that's that's basically Boris and Mishka, and they're like exact opposites, and they love each other very much. They're like the partners from Utopia. Yeah, and they don't, they're they not allowed to say exactly what it is we do, but we enjoy our job very much. We definitely do a job that definitely. needs money. In we, definitely, we definitely do a job that needs done in this world. That is what we believe. That My is job. why we are sticking to it like this. <laughs> it is thankless profession. <laughs> or people cannot thank you afterward, no matter what they try. <laughs> Good income. That's good. <laughs> it's a thankless profession where they <laughs> they can't thank us. <laughs> they literally cannot. I think that we never came up with a with a like a real backstory or anything. A personality though for Boris. Uh, Boris was supposed to be very very scary looking and very very soft. Oh yeah, like he's supposed to be I like really. I told you I would not cry, but I cry. <laughs> but I cry. <laughs> I cry tears of salt and water, please. You're going to have <laughs> please, me. Please, my electrolytes. <laughs> please, you're going to have me crying out all of my emotions like this on camera and everything. I am not made for this. This is why I do not do show business, even though I would be really good at it. I know we are not supposed to have snack during mission, but I need to give you this peanut butter bar <laughs> and look one of the cliff bar because it looks like you are losing your sugar. This is all right. Thank you for loving on me, Boris. I Please drink it. this water and take a nap before we carry out this hit. I appreciate. Don't say that. We are. We are writing hits. We are being discreet. <laughs> Find us. Follow us. Please give us some traction. And uh, we love you. Be safe.